Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about the Touch OSC editor for the Touch OSC application for the iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. I will provide a link uh, in the description for the Touch OSC editor at the manufacturer website. But starting off, you can see the Touch OSC editor will open to a uh, standard iPhone iTouch layout. And you also know the, uh, the iPad it can also use Touch OSC, so they also offer that layout as well. But just um, assuming that everybody has more, um, more people have iPhones and iPod Touch, we're just going to stick with this tutorial with a simple layout. You can switch the orientation from vertical to horizontal. You see that the navigation bar will just go to the side here. You can also make more than one page, so all those who are worried about uh, sticking a thousand features onto one page don't have to worry about that. You can stick it, uh, different uh, features on different pages, keep things more organized. Um, just for the purpose of this video, we'll stick to the vertical layout. Um, but so introducing uh, the basic features that you can add to your layout here. Uh, labels are very important. It keeps things organized, attributes names, so you won't forget uh, what does what. So uh, let's see. Let's write down my name here. If I can spell it right. Okay. You can change the size of the box, but not the text. Not in this uh, way. But uh, that's why you have this uh, text adjuster here, so you can make it big as you want. You can add an outline, or if you're going to just overlay it on a button and you don't want these features to hinder the sight of it, you can uncheck those and they will just provide you with the text. You can also do it horizontally. Basically the same thing. Alright, so let's introduce the simple and most often used function, the button. It's kind of hard to see in a Touch OSC editor, especially what color it is, but um, you'll just have to depend on what it tells you here. Once you load it onto your um, device, it'll, be, it'll, pro it'll show more prominently, so you won't have to worry about that. Okay. They also have a toggle button here. This is a button that is used for things that for your program needs to be constantly applied, such like as a play button. You don't want to use this something for a cue um, uh, unless it's a program that depends on you holding the cue button for the song to continue playing. Uh, you have your X and Y pad. This is something that will be commonly used more affecting the parameters of effects. Um, let's see, you have your faders here. It can be used for pitch or volume have your horizontal fader. This could be used for uh, cross faders and you can also invert them using this uh, function here. You can also center it so this will look more like a, a standard cross fader. So this would be something uh, use like you don't want to start off your volume all the way high you kinda want to invert that so it's low to high here or if you're using this for uh, pitch adjust you might want to center that so it starts at 0% pitch. Okay, let's see. You have your rotaries. These are to either affect the parameters of your effects or to change um, you know, your high, mids, and lows. You have a multi-toggle. This is something that can be used for a beat machine. Use that to fill up the whole page. Let's see. Multi-faders. This is something that can also be used for a beat machine or just a uh, you know, five channel mixer here. You can also change the colors of um, of the different buttons here. It's very useful for keeping things organized, like red will be channel one and blue will be channel two. And also you want to keep this OSC option uh, to stay on auto. This will tell the editor that eventually you're going to have this uh, function here you know, associated with something that you want to do uh, later when I provide another tutorial for the oscillator. Well, that's a, a simple overview here. Uh, to get these layouts onto your device, you will want to save your layout. Uh, let's open one that I already did here.
This is one that I constructed for the Serato Scratch Live. You're then going to uh, sync this onto your phone. By going to the options screen once it opens up. So you see here that it has layout. Click here and these are all the different layouts that are loaded onto the device. You go to add and you're going to see add layout here. It's going to search via Wi-Fi any hosts that uh, we'll connect to and you do that by going to the network here and I have it selected to you know my MacBook. So let's go back. We're going to add one here. So you go back to the program and you click this button named Sync. It's going to give you instructions to make sure that the iPod or iPhone is on the same Wi-Fi network as the computer. It's going to tell you to go to Touch OSC, Layout and Add, and then select the machine's name. So you can see now that my uh, computer has shown up into the found host, so you press that. It's going to download it, and since I already have it loaded, it's just going to ask uh, if I want to overwrite the original file. And since it's the same thing, it's OK, so you press OK to continue, and there you have it. The Serato layout is added to the layout options here, amongst the other various uh, standard layouts that it came with initially. All right, so I'm, I hope this video helps you and uh, inspires you to create your own interesting layouts. And as always, please uh, subscribe uh, to my videos. And as always, stay tuned to uh, wildstyletheturntablist.tumblr.com.